Ever wonder why gold and silver have pretty much cornered the market when it comes to jewelry? I mean, there are tons of metals out there. Iron, aluminum, titanium, even platinum. But gold and silver? They've ruled the jewelry world for thousands of years. And it's not just because they're shiny. Though let's be honest, the sparkle definitely helps. There's a whole cocktail of science, history, chemistry, and good old human behavior behind this preference. So today, we're diving deep into why these two metals continue to be the reigning champions of rings, necklaces, bracelets, and more, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the chemistry, because that's really where gold and silver shine, literally and metaphorically. One of the biggest reasons these metals are so prized is because they don't do something that most other metals do. They don't rust, or tarnish easily, or fall apart when exposed to air or moisture. Gold, in particular, is incredibly stable. You can leave a piece of pure gold in the ground for centuries, and when you dig it up, it'll still look the same. That's not an exaggeration. That's just elemental gold being its fabulous self. Silver does tarnish a bit over time, especially when it reacts with sulfur in the air, but it's still far more stable than iron, copper, or other common metals. This chemical stability means that when you wear gold or silver jewelry, you don't have to worry much about it corroding or turning your skin green. That alone makes them ideal candidates for something that's meant to be worn close to the body. Plus, they're non-toxic. Unlike something like lead, which can leach into the skin or cause serious health problems, gold and silver are basically harmless to human biology. That's a big deal, especially for cultures throughout history that wore jewelry 24-7. Not just to look good, but often as symbols of status, wealth, or even spiritual protection. Then there's another super practical reason. These metals are easy to work with. Gold is one of the most malleable materials on Earth. You can stretch it into wire, beat it into sheets, mold it into intricate designs, all without needing super fancy tools. Same with silver to a slightly lesser extent. For ancient artisans, this was gold, pun intended. They didn't have access to high-powered machinery or laser cutters. They worked with fire, hammers, and patience. So having a metal that could bend to their will without cracking was a huge plus. Try doing that with something like titanium or tungsten, and you'll find out really quickly why those didn't make it into the royal jewelry boxes. This ease of manipulation also meant that gold and silver could be used to craft some truly intricate designs, filigree, engraving, embossing, all the detailed stuff that makes a piece of jewelry stand out. You wouldn't get that kind of fine craftsmanship with steel or aluminum. They're just too tough or too brittle. Gold and silver hit the sweet spot between strength and flexibility, which makes them perfect for the job. Now, let's talk about availability. Gold and silver are rare, but not impossibly so. This balance is actually important. If a material is too common, like iron, it loses its prestige. But if it's too rare, like some exotic elements we barely hear about, it becomes impractical. Gold and silver fall into this golden middle ground. They're not lying around everywhere but you can still find enough to make jewelry, coins, and even thread them into clothing or decorative items. Throughout history, civilizations across the globe have discovered local sources of these metals and found ways to refine and use them. They weren't the rarest materials, but they felt rare enough to be special, which added to their allure. Because of this perceived scarcity, these metals naturally became associated with wealth and power. Kings wore gold crowns, priests carried silver chalices, and lovers exchanged gold rings. And since these metals don't degrade, those artifacts were passed down for generations, reinforcing the cultural importance of gold and silver. 
It's kind of like a feedback loop. We value them because they last, and because they last, we keep valuing them. Let's not ignore the obvious. They look amazing. Gold has this warm, deep glow that catches light like nothing else. It doesn't just shine, it glows. It stands out against any skin tone and has this luxurious feel even in small amounts. Silver, on the other hand, offers a cooler, more subtle shine that's no less elegant. It pairs beautifully with gemstones, reflects light sharply, and brings a clean, timeless vibe to any piece of jewelry. Humans are visual creatures. We're attracted to shiny objects. It's practically hardwired into our brains. That's why birds steal sparkly things for their nests, and toddlers go straight for anything glittery. So it's no surprise we've always gravitated toward gold and silver. They're the natural bling. You don't have to paint them, polish them constantly, or coat them in chemicals to get them to shine. Nature already did all the hard work. Of course, that's not to say other metals haven't had their moment. Copper, bronze, pewter, they've all been used in jewelry, especially when gold and silver were scarce or too expensive. More recently, metals like stainless steel, tungsten, and titanium have entered the scene, mostly for their durability and sleek appearance. But none of them have quite knocked gold and silver off their thrones. They either lack the historical prestige, the natural shine, or they're just too difficult to shape without heavy industrial processes. Let's not forget, jewelry isn't just a dormant, it's investment. A gold chain or a silver bracelet isn't just pretty, it's also a store of value. That's something very few materials offer. If the economy takes a turn, people don't hoard aluminum foil, they buy gold. For centuries, gold and silver were used as actual currency, and that legacy lives on. When you buy gold jewelry, you're not just paying for beauty, you're putting money into something that holds its worth. That alone makes it attractive, not just for wearers, but for collectors, investors, and even smugglers. So when you look at a piece of gold or silver jewelry, you're not just seeing a fashion choice. You're looking at a complex intersection of chemistry, history, art, psychology, and even economics. These metals earn their place in our hearts and around our necks, not just because they're shiny, but because they hit this perfect combination of being rare, but workable, beautiful, but durable, valuable, but wearable. Other metals might come and go, trends may rise and fall, but gold and silver, they're here to stay. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.